All right, we're gonna take a look uh, right now at what happens if you put an inductor and a capacitor in a circuit. Uh, so it's called an inductor capacitor circuit or an LC circuit. And an old timey name for this is uh, what's called a tank circuit. You'll see it's gonna end up behaving um, like, well, instead of water sloshing back and forth in a tank, um, this will be like charge sloshing back and forth in this circuit, all right? So the way you get a handle on the dynamics of this thing is uh, much like we did with a resistor um, capacitor circuit and RC circuit or the RL circuit is you start by um, uh, take, Looking at Kirchhoff loops. So you walk around the circuit and have the voltage changes add to zero um, So if you go around this circuit, you're gonna have a voltage change as you go across the capacitor um, And a voltage change as you go across the conductor or the inductor and those voltage changes are gonna add to zero and so what we can do is say, okay, well, if we go this way, we're going to climb voltage um, as we go across the capacitor. And what you'll get is a voltage change of uh, Q over C. And then as you go across the inductor, well, why this is going to be dropping voltage because, right, this is the high voltage side and the low voltage side. Current's going to go this way from high to low. So you're going to drop in the voltage um, and it's going to be... Um, you're going to be going down by L, D, I, D, T. And so those voltage changes are going to add to zero. Right? Now our goal here, what we're going to try to do is get the dynamics of the circuit. So we're going to try to get, say, the charge on the capacitor is a function of time or the current is a function of time, either one. Um, so let's set as a goal for now, um, let's just get um, the charge on the capacitor as a function of time. We'll say Q, T. Um, well, what you notice right now is we have Q as a time-dependent variable, and we have a current as a time-dependent variable, so we have kind of too many variables right now. Um, and so it would be nice if we could get rid of, the, get rid of one. Well, so it turns out we can. Um, what we can do is, right, the, charge, the capacitor is going to lose charge at a certain rate, and if it's right, losing charge at a high rate, that would be like a high current, all right? And so the um, current is just the rate of change of the charge, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute in that current is the rate of change of the charge. Now, the reason I've got this negative sign in here is as the, ch as the capacitor dumps charge, it, its dq dt is going to be negative because it would be losing charge. So this term would be negative. And then just to, to make the current say a positive quantity, I, I would put another negative sign in front of this, okay? So when the capacitor is discharging, I'm gonna say the current is minus dQ dt, right? So we're just gonna substitute this quantity for the current. Well, you notice if I put in dQ dt for i itself, then since I'm taking d by dt of i, this will become a second derivative, right? So what we're gonna have is Q over C, um, this, is going to become plus because of that minus sign, um, L and then d squared i by dt squared, d squared q, excuse me, by dt squared uh, equals zero. So again, that's just substituting minus dq dt in for i, right? Um, and so then um, what I'm going to do is, well, let's just, let's just, we now have a differential equation for q. Um, what I'm going to do is just solve this guy for the, um, the second derivative of Q. I'm going to put everything else on the other side. So you get D squared Q by DT squared, second derivative of Q equals. Well, then you're going to have a minus Q over C over here and then divided by the L. So you get minus 1 over LC times Q. Now, if you've had uh, differential equations or if you've had mechanics already, which you probably have if you're already studying this kind of material, is um, this, you know, this equation, well, this is saying there's an equation out there that if you, take, uh, if you take two derivatives of it, of the expression, you get it back with negative a constant in front. And so you may recognize this as oscillations or sines and cosines. Where you've seen this thing before is when you do a mass on a spring, Right, for a mass on a spring, you get that the acceleration is the force over the mass. Uh, d squared x by dt squared, that's the acceleration, say, for a mass on a spring. Uh, that would be equal to the force, which is minus kx, and then divided by the mass. Right. Well, 
when you you know that for a mass on a spring, the, the solutions for you know how the thing moves, it's like sines and cosines. So it's something like, I'll just pick cosines, let's say. It'd be like A cosine um, root K over M T plus a phase. Like it just has uh, sinusoidal solutions. And then the period for a mass on a spring goes like two pi um, square root reciprocal of this thing. So it's like two pi square root m over k, right? Uh, really, you just set this term like equal to 2 pi because this trig function repeats every 2 pi. Um, so, so that's for mass on a spring. What we can do is kind of cheat off of that work to get how this thing's going to behave. Um, so, so the charge is just going to oscillate too. Um, and so what we could do is say, well, okay, that means that q of t then, we'll just cheat off of our work for mass on a spring. It's going to be some amplitude cosine of, and then um, instead of root k over m, instead of uh, square root of this thing in front of the x, it's going to be square root of this thing that's in front of the q. So it's going to be root 1 over lc times time plus a phase, right? And then your period is going to be 2 pi square root of the reciprocal of this thing. So it's going to be 2 pi uh, root LC. All right. So what what we're seeing here is this is saying that the the capacitor is gonna it's gonna discharge. Right. So the the function starting at a maximum, like a cosine wave, maximally charged, it's gonna discharge, go to zero, but then pass through zero, and and charge the other way. So the cosine wave it, it starts high, goes through zero, and then hits a negative, um, hits a minimum. Um, so it's going to discharge, fill up the other in the other direction, and then and then and then repeat the cycle. So the the charge in the capacitor is going to go like this. Well, let's try to get a handle on why that is. Um, so if you begin with a, we'll start with a charged capacitor, and we'll say we've just activated the circuit, so it's just starting to dump. All right. So we're going to again. We're kind of starting with a just charged, we've got this capacitor, we've just activated the circuit. It's starting to dump its charge. So as it starts to dump its charge, current's going to go through the inductor, and you can kind of trace which way it's going to go around like this, and this thing will slowly be kind of building up this magnetic field that points, like, say, up through the, through the inductor, right? So as far as charge against time, we're like, we've just started this thing, so it's just starting to lose a little bit of charge, so we're kind of here. We're here, and the current in this thing is, uh, it's just starting to build up. It's just starting to kind of wake this thing up. So we're here, right? Well then, so this thing continues to dump charge into, um, into this thing. Current builds up, and once we have the current really jamming in this thing, um, we've, built up, we've built up this monster field in this, um, in this coil or in this inductor, right? So the capacitor has kind of dumped its charge and we've got this monster field um, stored in this thing. Um, so we're kind of here where we have like maximum current raging through this thing, great big old field, and the capacitor has pretty much dumped its energy or its charge. Um, so you're kind of here. Now here's where it gets really interesting, I guess for the first time, especially if it's the first time you've seen this. So now you've got all this field built up, right? Well, so then, in, in, you know, current running through this thing, well, if the current tries to die down, if the current tries to die down, then what will happen is this field would then be trying to die down. Well, the problem with that is, as you know, when you change the flux through in a conductor, it will try to oppose the change in flux. Well, so what will happen is, as this field tries to die down, we would be losing the upward flux in the inductor. Well, so the inductor will try to maintain that upward flux by continuing to force current in the direction that it was going, okay? And so what that means is, what's neat about that is, since this thing's gonna continue to force current in the direction it was going, not only does the capacitor discharge, but it sort of overshoots and begins to recharge in the other way, with, with, with this plate actually gaining a net positive charge instead of just uncharging and having that be the end of it. Well, so at place three here then, what's happening is this inductor now, as the field is collapsing, the inductor is forcing charge onto the, um, the plates of the capacitor again. 
um, but in the other direction. And so what's happening is we kind of can say the sign of the charge of the capacitor, we kind of flip it. So this would be like place three here and here. Um, and then of course the current's gonna start to die down because as you populate the capacitor, there's gonna be kind of like less and less incentive for charge to want to go there. And so the current's gonna kind of taper down. Uh, and then at place four, we'll get where we've got the capacitor is fully charged the other way um, and the current has died down. And so you can see we've done kind of this half cycle where now the capacitor is charged the other way. Well, now it's all set to just dump back the direction that it came in, right? What's gonna happen if we could go to like stage five is positive charge here, we'll try to start dumping back the other way. So the current's gonna start running back the other way. We're gonna go on the current graph, we're gonna go down here. Well, so the cycle's just gonna repeat. So here's the beginning of our cosine wave that we, that we found. Um, so this is why it's called the tank circuit is the charge starts over here and it kind of sloshes over to this side and then it's going to slosh back with this particular period. Um, so you see you can adjust the period at which it sloshes back and forth by adjusting either the um, inductance or the capacitance. Um, as you go further with this, one other thing that you may add to this is if you throw a resistor in here. Um, then what's going to happen is these oscillations will just get damped out. So you'll just get sinusoidal behavior, but with like an exponential envelope um, around it. Um, so that is what you get if you have an um, inductor capacitor circuit.